leadership and preparation. I'm always so grateful for the investment that you all make. So They're going to pull up a PowerPoint for me here, I think, in a second. Okay. It's not showing on the back there, so if you guys figure that out, that would be good. But obviously, it's sitting up there, so we're good to go. Anybody ever tried to summarize your faith in a short, short way? Anybody ever done that? Write a statement of faith or something along those lines? Um, ever tried to tell the gospel story in like a way that somebody doesn't get like bored by it? Anybody ever tried to do that? Yeah. Ever struggled to interpret scripture, kind of putting different things into different places? Anybody ever done that? Um, Anybody that's ever done a Bible study or anybody that's ever led a small group has probably wrestled with that a little bit. Um, this new series we're, we're starting today, it's called Believe and Be Love. And the title for my message today is just the prologue. We're just setting this up because what we're going to be doing is walking through the Apostles' Creed together. Um, but the series is really designed uh, around not just teaching us what to believe, but really learning how to solidify or maybe just embracing and solidifying the confidence to give us a renewed perspective on how to take our faith and share it boldly in love. As we get going today, I'd like you to think around this idea. This idea is the Christian faith is mysterious, not because it is so complicated, but because it is so simple. Some of us just need to go back to the basics. Some of us just need to be encouraged that this faith, this becoming like Christ, is not something that is so unattainable or mysterious or anything like that, but it is mysterious entirely because it is so simple. There's something beautiful about the creed. It is profound, right? And yet it's mysterious in its simplicity. The interesting thing about the creed is that it helps us to frame what we believe, but at the very heart of it, we have to have faith right from the beginning to believe it. And we possess enough faith right at that moment of belief to carry us the rest of our Christian journey. That's the profound nature of believing in Jesus Christ. We possess the faith that we need to get us through. But the journey of discipleship, the journey of growing and becoming like Christ, is one of increasing awareness, increasing understanding. In fact, the whole of the Christian life, the whole of our journey in faith, can be wrapped up in the mystery of baptism. Think about that. Dying with Christ and rising with Christ through the Spirit to the glory of God. That's the essence. It's wrapped up right in baptism. In fact, Ben Myers, who you see quoted there, um, he's a theologian and a scholar from Australia, the Millis Institute from the Christian Heritage College in Australia. He says that discipleship consists of remaining right at the beginning. It is the paradox of the Christian journey. Interesting, right? The paradox of the Christian journey. We think that when we enter in, that we're entering in to go to higher and more mysterious places. But the paradox of the Christian journey is that we actually remain near the beginning, holding on to the belief that we had right at the beginning, exercising the faith that we had right from the beginning to die with Christ and to rise with Christ, to stay right there is the paradox of discipleship. Dr. Martin Luther, Martin Luther of the Reformation, he exemplified this. Although I am indeed a doctor, he said, 
I never move on from the childish doctrine of the Ten Commandments and the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I still daily learn and pray them with my little Hans and my little Lena. Isn't that a beautiful statement? The great reformer, Martin Luther, knew how important it was to stay rooted and grounded, as Ephesians says, right at the very beginning. He had just as much to learn, says Dr. Myers, just as much to learn about the Lord as did his children. And that should be an encouragement, I think, to all of us. So my desire in walking through this with you is to walk through the Apostles' Creed, not because most of you need to know what to believe. In fact, I believe that most of you know what to believe, but I want us all together to become more convinced that we're in a good place because of what we believe, that we are in a better place because of what we believe, and therefore, in confidence, we can go out and share what we believe in its beautiful simplicity. Because remember, a couple weeks ago I said, this year is a year about going out and sharing that good news. We want to tell other people about Jesus Christ. We want to be so convinced, as Paul said, right? In his letter to the Corinthians, I am so convinced that I just want to go. I'm compelled to go and share this good news with other people. And I believe that a walk through the Apostles' Creed can help us in that journey. Maybe we'll gain a few insights along the way. I think you will. I have. I've been really encouraged with this journey. It's kind of like... I really appreciated the the analogy that Ben Myers used in his book. It's called The Apostles' Creed. And he says it's like this. Imagine that you have gained a vast inheritance. It was left to you by your parents or grandparents. You've gained this vast inheritance. But you can't take it all in at once. The more you learn... It doesn't take away from the inheritance that you've gained, but it just gets you more excited and more aware of all that is truly yours. Think about the journey into this creed and to the roots of our faith as being like that. We are opening up our minds to the beauty of the vast inheritance that we have been given It's a picture of the Jordan River in Israel. I just use it to draw your minds to the image and the picture of baptism. I want to read to you a story that was written by Bishop Hippolytus. He was born in the second century. He was probably writing in the third century. He wrote a little um, document called the Apostolic Tradition. And in this document, he records this story. On the eve of Easter Sunday, a group of believers has stayed up all night in a vigil of prayer, scriptural reading, and instruction. The most important moment of their lives is fast approaching. For years, they have been preparing for this day. When the rooster crows at dawn, they are led out to a pool of flowing water. They remove their clothes. The women let down their hair and remove their jewelry. They renounce Satan and are anointed from head to foot with oil. They are led naked into the water. Then they are asked a question. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? They reply, I believe. And they are plunged down into the water and raised up again. They are asked a second question. Do you believe in Christ Jesus, the Son who was born of the Holy Spirit and Mary the Virgin and was crucified under Pontius Pilate and was dead and buried and rose on the third day alive from the dead and ascended into the heavens and sits at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead? And they confess, I believe. And they are again immersed into the water. And then a third question. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church and the resurrection of the flesh? And a third time they cry, I believe. 
and then they are immersed one more time. When they emerge from the water, they are again anointed with oil. They are clothed, blessed, and led into the assembly of believers, where they will share for the first time in the Eucharistic meal, that is what we call communion. Finally, they are sent out into the world to do good works and to grow in faith. The simple declaration of belief draws them into the community of faith and empowers them to go out and do good works. Isn't that a beautiful story? That is the essence of how the creed came to symbolize the foundation of our faith. Let me just give you a little bit of history. The earliest recorded ideas about the Apostles' Creed were actually probably known as the Roman Creed, and it probably went back into that very first century. And it probably was something that was summarized by the very apostles and passed down through. And we have records of it being used even by uh, Irenaeus in the second century and all the way on up through. So it has been around the Apostles' Creed since the beginning, really, of the early church. The legend over centuries became that because there are 12 statements or 12 affirmations of faith within there, that one of them was written by each of the 12 apostles. Now that is largely a legend, but that is probably how it became known as the Apostles' Creed because uh, it's not, it wasn't exactly what we know it as until about the 6th to the 8th century, somewhere in there. So the Apostles' Creed as we know it and say it probably wasn't until about then. It precedes the Nicene Creed. Some of you might be familiar with the Council at Nicaea, the Nicene Creed, and the Apostles' Creed actually precedes that. Nicene Creed was in the 4th century, the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. That's where that started and probably was built off of the Apostles' Creed. But the Apostles' Creed has been the one that has been predominantly held on to by Western churches. The Nicene Creed is used a little bit more by Eastern Orthodox and Eastern churches. So we, the Western church, uh, hold a little bit more closely to the Apostles' Creed. The question some of you might be asking is why now? Why would we be going through this particular journey at this stage in the life of our church? That would be a good question. That would be all right. Uh, anticipating that question, um, just give you a couple of my thoughts about why we're here. We just came through a series that we called Life Together. And in that series, we talked about what unites us and distinguishes us and defines us and compels us and empowers us. Even we talked about what disrupts us as a community. And as we talked about that, we talked about growing together in love. We talked about growing together in community. And we talked about committing ourselves to going out and sharing that good news. And so this series has been on my heart for a while, this walk through the Apostles' Creed has been on my heart, and it, and it seems like now is a really good time to solidify and build confidence in those of us who do believe, who sometimes ask the question like, how do I know? How can I be sure? What's the foundation of my faith? Anything that would cause us to doubt or question where we are in our journey, this is a good time to go back to the basics, back to the roots, so that we can then become more convinced and more empowered to go out and share this good news. We're also coming in to the season of Lent and Easter. February 26th is Ash Wednesday. If anybody's interested in attending an Ash Wednesday service, uh, our sister church, uh, Community of the Savior, will have one. 7 p.m. on Ash Wednesday. There's other places that you could tap into that. That marks the beginning of Lent. That is the season of preparation leading us into Good Friday and Easter. Well, Easter is the traditional time the church has used to baptize its new converts. And so we're going to walk along that journey and prepare ourselves, and potentially, if there's anybody among us, anybody here, or anybody that you know that is interested in being baptized, I have ordered a tub, a, a hot tub, that we will use on Easter weekend, only for this purpose, just mind you, all right? But we have it coming, and it will be here if anybody is interested in being baptized. And I will be holding baptism classes 
March 1 and March 15 up in our conference room. So anybody that's interested, please let me know and then be prepared and we will have a time over Easter weekend. But that's really why it's a perfect season to go back to the roots and to study and to think and to, to be empowered by the basics of our faith. And then the third one is it's a powerful and unifying statement with its historic roots. It made me think of a story. I personally have learned over time that I really, really like history. I remember probably before my kids were born, we, my wife and I took an early vacation and we went down to Washington, D.C. And we were driving down, some of you, Eric, knows this route all too well. We were driving down Route 15, and we got through Williamsport, and we got to the southern part of PA, and, and then you know that you start seeing signs for Gettysburg. Anybody ever rode that route? You know, you see the signs for Gettysburg, and then you cross the border into Maryland. And, and I just remember, I don't know, I was hyped up about it. I'm not sure what I was, but I just remember getting down south of Williamsport, getting to Gettysburg, and just having this sense of driving into history. Anybody ever had that sense? If you get, get down into the battlefields and the battlegrounds and, and all that went on in our country, and you just know you're, you're driving, and now we live in an area where there's a lot of history, but for some reason, Gettysburg and the battles that happened there and Lincoln and all that stuff down into D.C., it just moved me in that particular moment. And like for years, I kind of held on to that. I just, I realized how much history means to me. I should have known because my dad loves history and my dad's been pressing history into us for a long time and I, being the dutiful teenager that I was, like held it at arm's length, right? I don't, I don't need the history, right? I just kind of move forward. But, but the older I get, the more I really realize I, I appreciate history. And, and the classes that I've been taking over the last year and a half now, I've, I really love the historical side of what I'm learning, the historical theology and understanding how we got to where we are and why we're rooted in what we're rooted in. And, of course, the Apostles' Creed comes right out of that, right? And so one of the earliest things I've been learning about is this Apostles' Creed. I like being connected to it, and I want us to be connected to it. I, love, I, I like or I love its simplicity, but I also love its depth. I like that in affirming it, we are connected to Christians throughout the centuries. I also like that in affirming it, we are affirming our own belief, and we are allowing the Holy Spirit to affirm God's love for us through it. If we're not affirming God's love for us, if it just becomes a creed, we might be missing out on some of its depth. You read this, we read it together. I think this verse kind of really summed up for me where we're heading with all of this. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through, the, through, the, through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. If you were here last fall, you know that we walked through this letter that Paul wrote, likely Paul wrote. We called it a masterpiece in progress. And when we got to this particular section, we were talking about what God had created the church to be. And there's this marvelous section a few verses before that in 3, 1 through 11. And it talks about the mystery that was revealed to Paul and to the apostles and then to us as the church. And we were to be the witnesses in the heavenly realms to what God had designed to do. And that was to bring this good news to the whole world, not just to the Jewish people, but to the Gentiles and to everybody. And it was this marvelous mystery that was revealed and these verses flow right on the heels of that. We are the church on display to share the good news of Christ's message for the whole world to be rooted and grounded. The word rooted there is a lot like strengthened. The word grounded is like foundation, to be strengthened in the foundation of love. Rooted and grounded in love, further strengthening us to become the witnesses that we need to be to the world but we keep it simple. We grow, but not in a progression away from the simple mystery, but by remaining closely connected to its very roots. 
the paradox of discipleship. It's a fascinating thought. We will learn more, but let us never progress too far away from our roots. Let me just give you a couple more thoughts about this. Again, this today is a lot about setting up what's coming for the next seven weeks as we walk through, and we're going to pick apart, talk through each of the affirmations in a lot more detail. But for our purposes today, I want you to think and to frame the Apostles' Creed. Um, again, Dr. Myers kind of helped me put this in these two categories, the creed being educational and sacramental. Educational and sacramental. Educational in this sense, it's simple yet ordered. It's a simple yet ordered way to discern Scripture. It's about God. It's about His Son. It's about the Holy Spirit. Three distinct articles, the three members of the Trinity. It's about kind of a simple way to understand Scripture. Anyone, that means, can have a basic understanding of the flow of Scripture. It's a guide for us with basic scriptural interpretation. So if we kind of can put ourselves in a very loose way, like trying to understand the different aspects of Scripture, we know kind of from this creed the basics of it. And it can kind of help guide us into some scriptural interpretation. It also very succinctly, remember that first question, trying to tell the, the biblical story or to tell the, the narrative of, of Scripture? It gives it very succinctly. If you've ever tried it, you don't need to. They did it. All right, it's called the Apostles' Creed. You can write down the basics and the essence of your faith. So it's educational, but it's also sacramental. What do I mean by that? We become disciples and members of the Christian community through the recitation of this particular creed. It's not just something that we believe, but it's part of belonging to something so much bigger. It's part of declaring and testifying to something so much bigger. I referred to a bishop of the church known as Irenaeus a little while ago. Irenaeus of Gaul, he would say it this way, the baptism of our regeneration takes place through... Th through these three articles, granting us regeneration unto God the Father through his Son by the Holy Spirit. He was from the second century, he, very early on, understanding that this was the foundation of belief in Jesus Christ. Educational, sacramental, learning and teaching about the creed is essential so that we can make a declaration and commitment with complete understanding but in making the confession, our thoughts and life are now ordered around God and his thoughts for the world, which are love. Love. Believe and be love. That's the essence of what we're going to be walking through together over the next several weeks. I hope it gives you a little bit of an appetite to dig in to study, to learn, to embrace, to hear, to feel. I'm going to invite Andrew to come forward, and he's just going to give us a few minutes to respond, to reflect on anything that you've heard this morning. This would be a good time for you to, to jot some notes, maybe a question. What do I want to learn through this series? Maybe it's a response to what you've heard today. How has what I heard today changed my perspective on something, or how could it? What do I need to know? So this is an opportunity for you to just take a few minutes to reflect. The altars are open if you'd like to come. We have the offering baskets if you'd like to place a prayer request or a tithe or an offering in there. Our ushers will have those at the back as well in a few minutes. We're just going to give you a couple of minutes and then I'm going to come back and close us in prayer and we'll be done for today. Let me pray with you now. Heavenly Father, as we enter into this time and take a few minutes to reflect, we invite your Holy Spirit to open up our minds and our hearts. There's something beautifully simple about where we're heading beautifully simple about what we believe, and yet marvelously mysterious and profound. Lord, may we never 
please, by the power of your spirit, may we never grow complacent with the basics, with the essence of our faith. And may you inspire us by your love to reach out and share that good, simple news with others. So Lord, speak to us now. Open our hearts and our minds and give us the space that we need to reflect on where we're heading and where you're leading us. In Jesus' name, amen.